Hey everyone, Chris here from Varsity Gaming, and welcome back to the ninth episode of Siege School. Today's topic is going to be covering an aspect of defending site called anchoring. Anchoring is when a defender stays on site or a room right next to site to defend it from attackers, generally as a last line of defense. It's a role that's equally as important as roaming in the high rank play as you need someone to defend the objective from the attacker so they don't just walk on in. Generally, the best anchors are the 1 speed, 3 armor operators. They can tank the most bullets and usually have abilities that really complement well with anchoring. I'll go over the tier system for which operators I think are the best to anchor towards the end of the information segment after I've covered all the other information. First, I want to talk to you guys about peaking and holding angles. These are two things that are very important for almost every anchor to know. As an anchor, you don't want to be running out and being super aggressive. Remember that you are the last line of defense. If you and all other anchors on site die, then the roamers are completely screwed because the enemies will now have control of the objective and they have almost no chance of getting it back. So very rarely do you ever want to be aggressive. As with everything I always say, there's always exceptions, but in the general you do not want to be aggressive as an anchor. So instead you should be learning how to peek and hold angles. If the attacking team has to go through a doorway or a window, all you really have to do as an anchor is just hold an angle on that doorway or window and just wait for them to come through. Positioning is really important here because you don't want a part of your body sticking out where the enemy can shoot you before you even see them. Now obviously I can't go through every single objective for every single map and tell you which angles to hold. This comes with more time and experience. The only general advice I can really give you is try to hold angles that the enemy basically has to put themselves in danger in order for them to see you. So if you're holding an angle on a window, try not to hold it while you're standing out in the open. You want to hold it so that when they jump in the window, they have to turn and look for you in order to actually hit you, whereas you have time to react. This is why a lot of people will put shields in doorways or try to hold from next to a window because then the enemy has to jump through and then turn to look at you, whereas you can just shoot them as soon as you see them. But this part requires a little bit of map knowledge, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. When you're playing as an anchor, very little map knowledge is needed on the overall. Obviously, if you know more about the map, you can do more as an anchor, but as a starting stone, you really do not need to know that much. All you really need to know is the objective site and the adjacent rooms. Beyond that, you're rarely, if ever, going to actually be leaving site, so you really don't need to know the rest of the map. Like I said before, the most map knowledge you really need to know is which angles to hold, and also what I'm about to talk about next is where to place your gadgets. So defenders have four gadgets. Barbed wire, deployable shield, impact grenades, and nitro cells. What gadget you take is very dependent on the game mode, but generally for an anchor, your best friends will be barbed wire and impact grenades. Now we're going to be moving on to the individual gadgets. For barbed wire, you should ideally be placing them in places where the attackers will have to expose themselves in order to break it, or that if they run in at the last second, they'll be super slow and an easy target. Very common places are inside of doorways on site, so that when they're running in at the last second to try to secure the objective, they'll just be sitting in barbed wire and you can peek up and shoot them. Other places also include in hallways or at choke points so you can hear when they go through the barbed wire and you can peek and pre-fire them. And next I'm going to talk about deployable shields. You can set up deployable shields at doorways or walls where it's almost flush with the wall and for an attacker it looks like there's nothing there, but for the defender they can see right through the little crack. This is a good way to peek attackers who are going to be pushing or peeking trying to get a good angle. Next I'm going to move on to impact grenades. Impact grenades should be used to make rotation holes or peek holes for defenders. They're a much more common gadget on bomb than any other game mode. As a secure area, you kind of want to hold down the room and not make holes into it so the attackers can go through, and the same goes for hostage. Meanwhile, with bomb, you have to defend two rooms, so you want to open up the walls between the two rooms, and the best way to do that is with an impact grenade. Before impact grenades, a lot of people had to use shotguns or nitro cells, but impact grenades are much more efficient. And the last gadget is nitro cells. Nitro cells really aren't that common on anchors. The reason being is because a lot of anchors are one speed operators, so you don't want to peek while walking super slowly and then they just shoot you as you try to throw a C4. However, it is used on some operators in order to get kills through the floor or get a kill as someone rushes in the door at the last second. All you have to do is put the C4 above and then wait for them to push in. And now that we have gadgets covered, I'm going to move on to reinforcements. I talked about this in a previous siege school where I think the anchor should be the ones to go reinforce walls off site. This generally means hatches. For quite a few maps, the best objective is usually the one in the basement, which generally means that the defending team has to go upstairs and reinforce at least one hatch, sometimes up to even four or five. I personally believe that the people who should go to get this are the anchors. The reason for this is because most roamers have a lot of gadgets to put down and don't really have time to go get hatches after putting down everything else. This means they'll generally be reinforcing after the prep phase is over and be very susceptible to dying depending on how quickly the attackers push. Meanwhile, most anchors can sprint right for the hatches, get them before the prep phase is even done, come back to site before action phase starts, and then start putting down all of their gadgets. They can put down their gadgets into the action phase because it doesn't matter as the attackers won't be pushing until well after. 
And on top of that, this is also a counter to Jackal, which I don't think I discussed before. A common strategy that a lot of people who play Jackal, including myself, run is going straight to the hatches and trying to scan any footprints for the people who reinforce hatches. If an anchor goes and reinforces a hatch, that means Jackal's going to scan their footprints and see that they're on site. This is a complete waste of a Jackal scan as you want to be using it as a way to hunt down roamers as opposed to knowing that an anchor is on site. So this gives your roamers an even bigger chance of just being able to hide off site and not being detected by Jackal or any other attacker. And one more thing about anchors and reinforcements is the wall between objective sites. This really only applies to the bomb game mode as there's two objectives, bomb A and bomb B, and they'll usually be in adjacent rooms. What this means is there's one wall separating them. Anchors are usually responsible for handling this wall and opening it up for their team to peek through. You do not want to reinforce this wall, at least not completely. Putting down one reinforcement so that you can hide and peek behind, that's fine, but you do not want to completely reinforce off this wall. This is a common mistake I see for a lot of new players is that they just look at whatever walls they can reinforce and try to reinforce them right away. If you completely block off the wall between the two objectives, then the enemy team can easily get in one site, plant, and then hold just the one door that the defenders can then come through. So as the anchor, your responsibility is to open up the wall, usually with impact grenades or a shotgun if you're playing someone like Smoke, and then not reinforce those walls. Instead, reinforce walls offsite if you have to, or just don't use them at all. There are plenty of objectives across the game where the defending team has more reinforcements than they need. Just because you have extras does not mean you necessarily have to use them. Alright, now we're going to move on to the operator tier system. Keep in mind that this tier system is designed for PC players. On the overall, there's not too much of a discrepancy between PC and console, but there are usually one or two operators that can be shifted around. This is something that's brought up by a lot of people in the comment section saying, oh, this one operator is actually really good if you play them on console, but they're not that good on PC. And I understand that, but keep in mind this is coming from a PC player, so I'm mainly focusing on a PC tier system. And as well, I don't play on console, so I really don't know which operators are better on console compared to PC, as I don't have enough experience to talk about it. And one last thing I want to add. Keep in mind, realistically, anyone can camp on site as an anchor, with only one exception. Just because I classify one operator as a low-tier anchor does not mean that they can't camp on site, it's just that they're much better suited for other stuff. With that all said, I'm going to go right into the tier system. There are four operators that I would classify as top-tier anchors. The first being Rook. His MP5 is one of the best defender guns in the game because it has a decent amount of damage, low recoil, and also has an ACOG sight. His ability, putting down Rook armor, helps defenders across the entire team. They overall take less damage, and if they get shot anywhere but the head, they will get downed instead of killed. And as an added bonus, his gadgets include impact grenades and a shield. You can use impact grenades on walls to make rotation holes and use that to peek the attackers as they're pushing. He is also a top pick for bomb as you can use those impact grenades to make the holes between the two objective sites. The next top tier anchor is Doc. Overall Doc has a very similar kit to Rook, the only exceptions being that he has barbed wire as one of his gadgets, and a special ability is a stim pistol. Personally, I much rather choose Doc over Rook, but that's because of my personal preference. And my personal favorite is his barbed wire. You can use this on doorways to prevent people from pushing in, and then just peek them and kill them as soon as they try to push. The next one of those top tier anchors is Mira. Mira's gadget completely complements camping on site. You really can't roam and use her ability at all, really you have to put it down on the objective site and camp. And also it has just an amazing gadget to camp with. You can see the enemies but they can't see you, and then you can peek and pre-fire them before they even get a chance to react. And on top of that, even though she doesn't have impact grenades, she can have a secondary shotgun which can be used to open up walls on the objective site to make rotation holes. So that can save other operators from having to use their primary shotgun or impact grenades to make holes. You can just use a secondary shotgun that you realistically won't use for anything else. And the last of the top tier anchors is Smoke. Now when I did the Siege School on roaming operators, I got a lot of flack for saying that Smoke was a non-roamer. And I heavily believe that he is an amazing anchor. Yes, his SMG-11 is by far one of the most powerful guns and can be used to absolutely destroy people as you roam. But his kit on the overall is much more suited for sitting on site. The best kit you can run on smoke is to use a shotgun primary and an SMG-11 secondary. What you really want to do is just sit on site until the last 30 seconds. Your smoke canisters last 10 seconds each and you throw them at the doorway. If the attackers haven't pushed yet, you set off the gas canisters 10 seconds apart and really they can't get in without dying. And you can combo this with his barbed wire by putting at the doorway so when they try to run in they're stuck in barbed wire and choking on your gas canisters. And that's it for the top tier anchors. And now we're going to move on to the mid tier anchors. These are operators that I believe benefit a lot from staying on site, but don't necessarily have to stay. The first one is Mute. His ability is really good for denying entry, primarily for countering Thermite and Habana. 
The problem with him is that it's very hard to juggle mute jammers. So once they destroy one of the jammers, they realistically can still breach the wall before you can even put down another one. So all his gadgets are really useful for is a delay as opposed to complete denial. Alright, the next mid tier is Castle. Castle is a really finicky operator because not a lot of people know how to use him. Generally, you shouldn't be using his castles to completely block off the objective, but using it to block off a way to the objective. So you would put down your castles in the hallway or room adjacent to the site, and then kind of walk around and wait for them to push. He doesn't really benefit a lot from sitting on site, but he can if it's necessary. And the next one is Echo. Echo is one person I classified as a complete non-roamer last time, but he can be used to roam slightly. His ability really benefits from him sitting somewhere in a corner, waiting for someone to push, using his Echo Drone to disorient them, and then kill them. But again, you can still use it somewhat aggressively. And the next one is Pulse. This one was a little weird to classify because there are a lot of objectives where people try to stay on site as Pulse because you can see forth through the floor, but realistically he is much better as a roamer. This is because he's a fast operator with a gadget that scans people through walls, so you really don't need him on the objective site as you'll know when they're pushing well before his scanner even lets you know. And now we're going to move on to low tier anchors. These are people that can stay on site but really don't benefit from staying there at all and probably would be better off site. Or in general just aren't as good as the other anchors I'd mentioned before. The first one is Capcan. He can put down traps across the map and realistically him sitting on site isn't going to benefit you. So you kind of want to use him to put down traps across the map and then roam and wait for them to either try to shoot the trap and kill them while they're shooting it or hear when they break it and then try to flank them knowing where they are. And the next is Frost. Frost is kind of in the same boat as Capcan. She can put down traps, but really staying on site doesn't benefit her at all. You kind of want to put down your traps and then just leave. She doesn't really bring anything to the table that makes her an amazing anchor, but she really doesn't bring anything that would make her a better roamer. And the next one is Valkyrie. Valkyrie is someone I believe should be a lot more aggressive than passive. You can use your cameras and throw them outside, and then just find out where people are, jump outside, and kill them. Sitting on site just watching cameras doesn't really benefit the team at all, as any of the anchors could do that. Valkyrie should instead use her cameras to try to play more aggressively and pick them off before they even get to the anchors. The next one is Bandit. This one was also kind of tricky for me because Bandit is very much a roamer, but at the same time, he needs to be on site to ban a trick. So half the time he should be on site, but once the ban trick fails, then he can leave. Or if you choose to not ban trick at all, you can just put down all your gadgets and then roam heavy. So if you're going to use him for his gadget, stay on site, but if you don't care about his gadget and would rather just go for kills, then definitely roam. Him sitting on site holding angles is really not going to benefit you any more than, say, Rook or Doc doing it. And the last of the low tier is Tachanka. So obviously Tachanka is more of an anchor because he doesn't move from his position, but he's still so useless you should really never consider him at all. And the last two are non-anchors. The first one being Jaeger. Really with Jaeger what you should do is put down all your gadgets as quickly as you can and then leave. I think we can all learn a lot from how Travis plays Jaeger. Jaeger man in a nutshell. Alright, I'm ready. Jaeger has one of the best guns on defense and also is very fast. He really does not need to be on site and you have much better operators to choose from. And the next non-anchor who's the last operator on defense is Cavietta. If you ever, for whatever reason, decide to play Cavietta on site, then I will immediately hate you. She is literally designed to roam the map. You should never be with her on site. Her gadget is absolutely useless. Her ability is absolutely useless for anyone who's pushing site. If the attackers are pushing site, you're not going to get an interrogation off because they'll just kill you as soon as you down someone and try to go for the interrogation. The only time Caviera should ever be on site is for the last 30 seconds as they're pushing and she comes in for the flank. But you should never anchor with her, meaning staying from the beginning of the action phase to the end with Caviera on site. And that will conclude the anchor tier list for PC. If you have any questions or want me to expand on this, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer whatever I can. And with that being said, that concludes the information segment of this video. Now we're going to move on to the game show segment, which if you don't know, is where I ask you guys a question, give you 10 seconds on the clock, and you guys come up with an answer. If your answer somewhat matches my answer, then consider yourself right. And at the end of the quiz, I'll put up a few ranks on the screen determining how well you did based on how many questions you got right. That all covered, let's get right into the quiz. Question 1. How can you help your team while staying on site as an anchor? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. One of the best things you can do as an anchor is to go on cameras and let your teammates know what you see.
Even telling teammates what cameras have been shot out can be very helpful, because that way you know where they're pushing from, especially if you hop on cameras right at the beginning of the action phase. If you notice that one of the cameras by spawn is already broken, then you know where they're going to be pushing from, and you can tell your teammates to set up over there. And in that same vein, the thing that you can really do to help your teammates is to make callouts. I try to preach this time and time again is that if you're going to play Siege, use a microphone. Or at the very least, if for whatever reason you can't use a microphone and you're on PC, then you can still use text chat. Don't rely on it and expect people to always read chat and see all of your callouts, but it is at least an alternative. The worst thing that an anchor can do is not communicate to his team, because if the roamers don't know where they're coming from, they really can't do anything to flank unless they see for themselves. So make sure to give callouts and check cameras as frequently as you can without putting yourself in danger. Don't go on cameras while people might be pushing you, but go on them if you know that you're safe and you have teammates to watch your back just in case. Question 2. How many anchors is too many? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And time's up. For those of you who watched the Seed School video on roaming, this one should be pretty easy. The answer is 3 to 5 depending on the game mode. I think for secure area, 2 anchors is ideal. 3 is slightly pushing it and 4 is too many. For bomb, 3 is a decent amount, 4 is pushing it, and 5 is way too many. For hostage, you can get away with just having one person on site, 2 can sometimes be a bit of a cluster, and 3 is too many. Like I said at the beginning of the video, ideally your anchor should be your last line of defense. You shouldn't have everyone on site ready to kill the attackers as they push. Instead, you should have your roamers take care of them early on and dwindle their numbers so that when they make the final push, there's only a few people pushing one or two anchors. So ideally, you should only have two people on site, maybe three depending on the game mode and also the map. Some rooms are bigger, some rooms are smaller. But if you have four or five, then you're in for a really bad time. Question 3. When the attackers have broken a window or a wall to site, as an anchor, should you be peeking that broken window or wall? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is no. On the overall, you really don't want to be holding an angle on an open wall or window. Because of how this game works, peeker's advantage is a real thing. For those of you who don't know what peeker's advantage is, it's essentially when an enemy peeks you and they see you before you can see them. This is primarily due to ping, but it also has some other factors like how the game is coded itself. So if you're holding an angle on an open window or wall and the enemy decides to peek you, they'll have probably between half a second to a second, depending on how bad the ping is, to react to shooting you before you can even shoot them. So ideally as an anchor, if you're going to hold an angle, hold an angle to somewhere where you won't get easily sniped, or constantly peek back and forth. Don't just sit still watching an open wall or window. Question 4. Which attacker should you never peek? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And time's up. And the answer is Blackbeard. Although Blackbeard has been nerfed a lot from him previously having one shield with 800 HP to having two shields with 60 HP, he's still a terror for most defenders. I just talked about Peeker's advantage and how it works in this game. The thing with Blackbeard is that he pretty much negates all Peeker's advantage that a defender might have. That shield essentially grants him an extra second or two to react to you. So while you can break his shield and do some damage to him, a good Blackbeard player will react in time and kill you before you even have a chance to break his shield. So on the overall, it's better just not to peek him. What you should really do is wait for him to push in, because when Blackbeard pushes in, he's incredibly slow and very vulnerable. So you should be aiming to target him at this moment as opposed to when he's peeking through a window or wall. Now it's time for the bonus question. If you're an anchor and your team is winning 5 to 1, what should you do? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is, run out one by one and let me kill you individually. Because I could really use some more aces for my next ace video. Running out one by one is a proven strategy to work, at least for one of the teams. Oh my god. He wins this! He wins this! You win this! 
And that is it for today's episode of Siege School. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. I know today's was a little longer than usual, past 20 minutes, but I had a lot to talk about because this is one of the main things that I do while I play. And as promised before, here are the scores based on how many questions you got right in the quiz. Let me know in the comments down below how many you got right and to show off to other people how smart you are. And quickly, two small plugs before I go. One, I stream every single day on Twitch starting at noon Eastern Standard Time and I only play Siege. So if you want to watch and ask me questions and see how I play, then make sure to tune in by following the link on the screen or in the description below. And number two, the Siege School shirt is available on the store. The design is on the screen and a link to the store is in the description down below. And it'll also be linked on the end card. And that's it for my plugs. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's Siege School episode and learned something new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.